Hey everyone, what's up? How's everybody doing? Hello. There's never a good way to start a podcast. Hi, hello, how are you? I realize that I always say kind of the same thing when I start a podcast. I say, hey, what's up everyone? This is Mike Delic. I'm Mike Brancatelli. Eh, I mean, you're probably, too, if you're tuning into this for the first time, you're probably thinking like, wow, what a fucking unpolished jackass. Who the fuck starts a podcast this way? I do, okay? I do. This is my zone. This is my territory, okay? This is how we do things over here. Raw, unedited, unfiltered, foolish, silly, and, um, you know, embracing it. Like Steve Jobs always said, stay hungry, stay foolish, which was actually a quote off of the Whole Earth Catalog by Stuart Brand that he stole, which Steve Jobs also said, good artists copy, great artists steal, which he also stole from Pablo Picasso. (laughs) <laughs> so it's an amazing thing. What a beautiful thing it is to be alive. What a beautiful thing it is to be a human being, to be able to take a breath, to be able to think, to be able to shower and hot water and just so many things that we, we take for granted every single day. Now, of course, if you stop to think about all these things all the time and all you did was bask in the appreciation and the glow of all of your privilege, uh, you know, you would never get anything done. But, you know, it's nice to think about every every now and then. I try and think about it every day. I try and have gratitude every day. And, um, and you know, I try and think about, you know, some uh, sometimes I think about, wow, you know, um, uh, this is, um, you know, damn, I, you know, I wish I was, I wish I was a little taller, you know, I mean, I I wish I was like six foot four, that'd be pretty cool, you know, (laughs) like, I wish I could, I wish I was like really tall, that would be nice, you know, but I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not, so, you know, wishing to be isn't gonna, isn't gonna do anything, and then, you know, feeling bad that I'm not isn't gonna do anything either, you know, and then, what, what am I gonna get, one of those, those, like, insoles that, like, make you, like, five feet taller or whatever, you know, like, trick people, like, no, then you're just living a lie. So then obviously, you know, this mental kind of thing that I, I'm like, oh, I wish I had the, you know, then I check myself, you know, and I go, and I go, be grateful for what you have. Be grateful for who you are. Be grateful that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm relatively healthy. Like I'm in, you know, I'm, I have all of my organs functioning. I'm in good, good order. I don't have any diseases or aches or pains or chronic illnesses or anything like that. And wow, it's just, Fuck, I mean, it's just amazing. Like, it's just so amazing to think about that and really, really feel it and internalize it and just feel grateful, you know? I mean, sometimes we can get lost in our lives and and get caught up and I don't have this, I don't have that, I wish I had this, I wish I had that. But then when you think about it, think about all the things that you do have, you know? And then what, and then like I was in the shower today and I was thinking about this and I was just like, You know, I bet right now, somewhere in the world, there's somebody that's out there. Maybe they're in India, or maybe they're in Laos, or maybe they're, you know, in Peru, and there's there's someone, maybe it's a small child, and, you know, maybe they don't have anything. Maybe they don't even have, like, a third of what I have, and their life is, you know, what I would consider to be pretty bad, but maybe they're thinking, you know, maybe they're thinking, like, wow, I'm so lucky, I'm so glad that I have my family, or I'm so glad that I have, you know, that I'm alive, or I have this, or I have a little bit of food to eat. You know, I'm thinking about, from their perspective, what are they grateful for, you know? There's this wonderful meme uh, online, and it's not like a funny, you know, meme thing. It's, uh, um, it's, uh, it, it's more of like a, a nice uh, message um, I'm actually going to search for it right now because I, I don't want to, you know, fuck it up, but, uh, it's, it's, it's a very nice meme and it, it basically, it's like cut into four slices. Um, and it's like a guy who is looking out, um, you know, I think he's, he's, yeah, it's a, basically it's it, the way that it goes is this, it's, a, a at the top, uh, left-hand corner. There's like a helicopter, there's a, like a Ferrari car and then a helicopter in the sky. And the guy in the Ferrari, there's a little thought bubble, like a comic strip that says, uh, I'd love to have a helicopter. Wow. Wouldn't it be nice to have a helicopter? And then the next frame 
there's the Ferrari car and then there's like a BMW car next to it. And the BMW car pulls up to the Ferrari car and says, wow, that's, that's my dream car. I'd love to have that Ferrari car. And then the next frame is a guy riding a bicycle uh, next to the, B- the BMW car going, oh, wow, if only I could afford a car, you know? If only I can afford a car, it'd be nice. Then there was, uh, then next to it, there was uh, a guy waiting at a bus stop, and he sees the guy on the bicycle, and he says, "I wish I had a bike," you know. And and then there's a guy in a wheelchair, up in his house, looking out at the balcony at the guy at the bus station, saying, "Ah, oh, look at him. He can do whatever he wants. He can go wherever he wants." Unbelievable, right? It's just it, the guy just wishes he could walk, you know? He just wishes he could walk. So, I mean, it's, 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 you know, once again, it's like, it's, it, you can't really just every single day live your life like, oh, like, I'm so grateful, like, you know, because so many people don't have anything, so I should just appreciate what I have and not strive for anything and just be great, you know? It's a balance. It's like a da- it's really a dance. And I think over this past year I've really learned how to dance with life a little bit more. Ch- like not not suppress thoughts, not be like, "Oh, I shouldn't have these thoughts." I'm a, you know, but to allow the thoughts and then to recognize them and to check them for what they are and just move forward with that, right? Because nobody's a perfect angel, nobody's a saint. Nobody's a Buddha, a Christ, you know, like it's, 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 we all have fleeting moments of that, you know, and if you work hard and if you meditate and if you, you know, do breathing practices and you practice psychedelic use in a, in a responsible way, you know, you can achieve these, these momentary blips of, uh, you know, an enlightened kind of state, but it's very hard to walk, you know, to be that all the time. And I feel that some people in this kind of spiritual evolution, consciousness, psychedelic, healing crystal, you know, whatever movement, uh, you know, pretend like they need to be that way in order to be accepted by the rest of the people who are occupying this space. But you don't have to pretend. That's actually the opposite of what this all should stand for. You know, be who you truly are. And let your true feelings and your true thoughts rise to the surface and don't run away from them. Acknowledge them and, and look at them and say, hmm, okay, yeah, I, I, was, I was really desiring something there. You know, I, I was really wishing that I was, I was really being ungrateful for the life that I have and I was wishing for, you know, something really, you know, tremendously better than, than, than what I have. But stop to think about it and go, wow, there's, you know, how many, seven billion people on the, on the planet? and then you know, beyond that, how many life forms are in existence? Like, thank God I'm a, I'm a human being, you know? Thank God I'm, I have a human body. I mean, this is just, wow, incredible, you know? And then move on and then go on, you know? Have that moment of appreciation, recognize it, and then go on with your day and live your life, you know, as, and, and continue to be, you know, a self-interested human being, you know, that, but have that recognition because, and when I say self-interested human being, what I mean is, you got to be self-interested because you got to protect your own survival, you know? You got to you got to put food in your mouth and you got to have money and you got to like, you know, you got to do things in order to make sure that your life is good. So obviously, you're priority number 1. And then, you know, of course, you can have compassion and care for other people. Uh duh. But, you know, I be weary of anybody who tells you, "Oh no, I I care about other people more than I care about myself." Yeah, bullshit. We all care about ourselves. And, you know, we, and some of us care about other people a little bit more than other people care about other people. But, you know, it, that's, that's just the way it is. You can be a good person and care about yourself. Okay. It's, that's, I'm giving you permission to do that. So, um, anyway, <laughs> man, that was a hell of an opening rant. I don't know what the fuck, where, where that came from. Coffee? Uh, coffee. It's a wonderful drug, huh? Anyway. Um, so good to talk to you guys, uh, again, I feel, I feel like I want to be putting out more content. Um, I want to be putting out some more content and, uh, you know, I, I should be putting out more content because I am going to be going to Peru and I'm going to be going to 
work uh, at the Temple of the Way of Light. I'm doing a residency program there where I will be participating in, in ayahuasca ceremonies, and I'll also be working there as a link uh, in the kitchen and helping the staff prepare the nourishment and the food and the meals for the people there who are coming as guests like I was once there. And I'm really excited for this. I'm really, really excited for this. And, uh, you know, this is something that I've been thinking about for a long time. And, you know, when I came back from Peru last year in July, I had these, you know, I had this profound experience. I had these visions. I had these feelings. But I I did not want to just act on them right away. I felt like I didn't want to be spontaneous. I didn't want to be rash. I really wanted to meditate on the experience that I had, even though it meant a lot of suffering for me, you know, because I handled things in in, in not such a great way. I, I definitely let my, my ego get the best of me. I let my pride get the best of me. I'm still working. I'm, ve- I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I am working with anger issues. I am working with ego issues. I am working with, you know, issues of, of being too proud. You know, it, it's, um, you know, I'm also working with some superiority complex issues, some, some, some megalomania type stuff. I mean, it, it's, it's all there. You know, and I and I want to get into it. I want to talk about it more. I want to talk about my, you know, these flaws and these, you know, these these things that have been going on with me. And I want to do that in in another podcast, um, because this podcast is actually an old podcast that I recorded. I don't know. I want to say like seven or eight months ago, something like that. And I just never released it. I don't know why. This was in the early days when I was experimenting with you know, how the podcast should go. You know, originally I started off the podcast and I thought, wouldn't it be good to do like a a psychedelic news show? So like every couple of weeks I would be like, hey, this is what's going on in the world of psychedelics. And this is when I was at Gas Digital Studios and I had a producer. So in the early episodes, you'll hear, you know, some Dana or Maddie, they were, they were the producers and they would chime in and stuff. And we would talk and I would give a little bit of a report of like what was happening in the world of psychedelics. And then I'd kind of throw my own two cents in there. And then I went to the temple of the way of light and I took part in the ayahuasca ceremonies and that kind of, you know, really changed me a lot. And I came back and I told the four part ayahuasca series. If you haven't heard that, go back into the archives and listen. It's the, my four part storytelling journey of my ayahuasca experience. Um, and people really liked that. They reached out to me and said, wow, that, that ayahuasca trip story was really great. Um, you know, they were complimenting me and saying that I was a good storyteller and whatnot. So I'm like, okay, maybe I should play around with the format of the podcast a little bit. Maybe I should talk about more personal things. Maybe I should talk about stories and whatever. So I started playing around and and I started releasing these solo podcast where I'm just kind of thinking out loud, much like I am kind of right now. You know, I'm thinking out loud. I'm having a conversation with you guys, even though I don't really hear your side of things right now. You guys then message me after the show and give me input and give me feedback. And I move to that. Like I respond. That's that's you guys are are a large part in, in shaping this show and making it what it was. I couldn't do what I'm doing if it wasn't for you guys. I probably would have quit doing the show if I didn't get people messaging me and telling me, you know, what to do, you know, essentially like what, what you guys liked and what you didn't like. I thought I was a fucking lunatic just ranting and raving like a psycho, you know, and, and, and people were like, hey, we really like this kind of stream of consciousness sort of, you know, talking that you're doing, this like thinking out loud sort of thing. So I kept doing it, you know, I kept doing it. And I think, I think I've gotten better at it. I still have a lot of ums and likes and uhs and you knows and blah, blah and whatever. But I don't know, maybe that's my style or maybe I'm just a fucking idiot. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe all of the above is true. But whatever. Um, I want to give you guys what you enjoy. And so let's keep the communication going. Let's keep the feedback going. And um, yeah, so this podcast that I'm going to play for you today, uh, it's, it's called Poke Life, Authoring New Realities. And um, I recorded this about eight months ago or seven months ago. And like I said, it was, it was when I was experimenting with the format. So I probably sound a little different um, in this one, maybe. I don't know. I'd like to hear what you guys think about it. It's, it's kind of me capturing 
trying to capture some inspiration, trying to capture a flow state. Sometimes when I record episodes like the one you're about to hear, it's because I didn't have any set plan. I didn't have any set thing. I just got inspired and I was like, I got to sit down and I got to spit all this stuff out and I'm just going. And yeah, I probably fuck up. I probably stutter and stammer and repeat myself or whatever. But um, like I said, it's an old one and um, I'm going to play you this one. Uh, you know, uh, right now, so you guys can hear that. But anyway, I have a lot of exciting episodes coming up. Um, I have some some cool topics that I want to explore and I want to talk about. And um, I have a few interesting guests uh, on the on the horizon. Um, and what else? What else? What else do I want to tell you guys? Yeah, I'm gonna do a whole podcast about why I'm going to Peru. And the whole, you know, ayahuasca thing. And we'll talk, we'll get into the whole, you know, psychedelic journey and, and this whole past year and, and what I've learned and, and all this kind of stuff and my, my, how my daily practices has helped. And just what we're going to dive into all that stuff. And I'm going to talk about that. Um, what, uh, and then there's going to be, there's going to be some other podcasts that I have some good topics for. Good guests, yada, yada. I said that. And yeah. Anyway, so that's it. If you guys enjoy the show, you guys know what to do. Just fucking, you know, uh, share it, like it, subscribe, tell people about it, talk about it. Um, oh, I started a brand new Instagram. It's Mikeadelic underscore podcast. Uh, so I have like 219 followers, I think, right now. I don't know. I'm not really good at like being like an Instagram person. I don't know. I mean, I just everyone, everyone has different styles, I guess. I don't know. I feel, this is what I feel the most comfortable doing, just getting on the mic and talking to you guys. And everything else, I kind of feel like it's something that I have to do. Although I do enjoy making these little quote things. Like I I do like being artistic. So Uh, pardon me. Whoa, that was a, that's a full micadelic right there. Um, (laughs) <laughs> fucking a gas fart out of my mouth skin meat sack f- expelling gaseous fuel uh fumes so yeah i i started this new instagram account mikeadelic underscore podcast so i don't know check it out follow me there i'm trying to uh, build up like a following but i don't know what the fuck i'm doing i mean i i i, I I used to work in social media marketing and advertising, but everything I did was paid. We did, you know, we 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 basically spent tons of money, affiliate marketing stuff, gathered data and then adjusted from there. But as far as organic, I'm not really it's it's I find it so hard to to organically build an audience. I don't know. I just I'm not I don't want to spend all my time on there. I don't want to be fake. I don't want to say shit that I don't mean. You know, people are like, oh, you got to comment on other people's stuff. You got to follow the other people. It's like, I, I, no, I, I don't, I, I don't want to play the game. I just want to do what I want to do. So, you know, whatever. Follow me on uh, Mikeadelic underscore podcast and um, on Instagram. And uh, yeah, just, you know, like I said, thanks for listening. And, you know, if you want to go leave a review on iTunes, that'd be great. And uh, Patreon um, is doing really well. Thank you. Shout out to all my Patreon members. You guys are fucking awesome. You patrons are, are so fucking cool. I can't believe we're up to like 124 bucks. We're, we're almost half. We're more than halfway there. We're more than halfway to our goal. So thank you so much. And, uh, you know, if you don't have any money, don't worry about it. You know, if it's just the Patreon is for people who have a little extra scratch laying around and they want to just throw it my way. You know, you get some Federal Reserve notes that are just burning holes in your pocket. You, you're like, I got to get rid of this paper. Just throw it over to Mike Adelic and we, we really appreciate it. We love you. Okay, so here's the podcast. It's an old one. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, let me know. Love to hear your feedback about it. And uh, at the end... I play, I play two clips. One I play from Steve Jobs, and at the end I play a clip from Jason Silva, who is like a, a online, you know, epiphany expert or whatever. He's like, I don't know what he is. He's definitely a cool dude that uh, that I get a lot of inspiration from, and uh, he makes some cool YouTube videos, so I play a clip of him at the end. And that's about it. All right, guys, thanks. Until next time, peace. Psychedelics are illegal, not because... A loving government is concerned that you may jump out of a third-story window. Psychedelics are illegal because they dissolve opinion structures and culturally laid down models 
of behavior and information processing. They open to us the possibility that everything we know is wrong. We don't need new laws that control our consciousness and rigidly place it in a prison. Cognitive liberty. The fact that as adults, if we're not hurting anybody else, we should have the right to explore the contours of our own consciousness without any mediation or legislation on the part of somebody else. Reject the authority. Authority is a lie. Or is it perception? Information is power. But we have to seize, seize the opportunity. The opportunity. The opportunity. Thanks for joining me for this episode, uh, Stream of Consciousness ranting episode. This episode is going to focus on kind of what I, what I believe. And um, I'm going to play a clip right now that I found to be very uh, important. Um, you know, Steve Jobs was, was kind of an inf- influential figure in my life, um, funny enough as it is, because he's like, you know, this fucking psychopath, you know, fucking corporate kind of guy, whatever. But, uh, you know, I think that it's okay to be, to, to you know, to, to gain value from people that don't necessarily fit into every single facet of your criteria for who you want to be or what you value. You know, there's there's lessons to be learned in every little nook and cranny of every single kind of person that's alive and, and, and on this planet. No matter how uh, shitty, evil, pathetic, lazy, stupid, or whatever you think they are, I think everybody has something that, that can be gained from, if you just pay attention, there could be something gained. Anyway, that being said, uh, when St- it wasn't until, I think uh, I read Steve Jobs' biography by Walter Isaacson, that really uh, gave me the inspiration to be more entrepreneurial in my life, be more entrepreneurial in my life and and trust my vision, trust my creative instincts more. Um, Because I I looked at this guy, Steve Jobs, and I thought, you know, he's not like, he's not an engineer. He's not, what is he? Who is he? You know, he he wasn't this brilliant genius uh, guy who, I mean, not in the sense that he was, but not in the sense that we would normally categorize that in like, uh, with Steve Wozniak, his partner, he was the guy that kind of, you know, built everything. But I now recognize, or I, I started to recognize when I read that book that there, there is a place in society for people that are kind of visionaries or like digital shamans, you know, new age kind of, uh, technical shamanistic kind of qualities people that have uh, a vision people that know have a creative expression and 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 see to it that that manifests into into reality and and then when i learned that steve jobs said that taking lsd was one of the most important things that he had ever experienced in his life well that just set me down a whole new path because it kind of legitimized it for me i didn't really I, I didn't really know that that was something that uh, tech entrepreneurs and, and people were getting into, uh, especially Steve Jobs, one of the most brilliant, uh, you know, successful entrepreneurs of our time. So I'm going to play this clip. This clip really stuck out. This was a very profound, spiritual, mystical, deep kind of philosophical uh, clip that I found online of Steve Jobs, and it really struck a chord with me. And I really tried to understand what he meant, and you'll understand what I mean by saying that after you hear this. So the thing I would say is when you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way it is, and your your life is just to live your life inside the world, try not to bash into the walls too much, uh, uh, try to have a nice family life, uh, have fun, save a little money. Um, but life, that's a very limited life. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact, and that is everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. And you can change it. You can influence it. You can, 
You can build your own things that other people can use. And the minute that you understand that you can poke life and actually something will, you know, if you push in, something will pop out the other side, that you can, you can change it, you can mold it. Um, that's maybe the most important thing is to shake off this, uh, th this uh, erroneous notion that life is, is there and you're just going to live in it versus embrace it, change it, improve it, make your mark upon it. Um, I, I think that's very important. And however you learn that, once you learn it, uh, you'll want to change life and make it better because it's kind of messed up in a lot of ways. Um, once you learn that, you'll never be the same again. All right, well, what do I believe? What is this life all about? What is what is going what am I doing with this show? Why are you listening? Why am I talking? What what the hell is going on? What is the goal? What are we trying to accomplish here? All that stuff. Right? I don't know. All I know is that I feel compelled to to preach a message. I feel a fire within inside of me that is pushing me into a direction that I cannot avoid. I cannot um I cannot deny. I and and I think that if you feel that you have something inside of you uh that you feel passionate about that you feel that makes you feel alive that makes you feel like you're you know thriving and that you're you know you're really in alignment with with uh with life and the people around you whatever it is whatever that thing is it can be anything it 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 really can be anything because there's so many people on this on this planet you know they're all different everybody's everybody's different everybody has different interests different passions grew up in different ways and and the truth is we need all kinds of people to be doing all kinds of different things so whatever your thing is you got to you got to listen to that you got to tune in your human meat radio to that frequency and pay attention to that signal that's that's coming through I think a lot of times what happens is people ignore that signal. They 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 stay on that static station because they've already they feel that they're already in they're they're in they're already doing, you know, what they're doing and it's too late or they can't change or you know that if they do change what will people think or you know it'll it'll be a shattering of of uh, of everything that they thought that they believed in, and they would have to admit that they were maybe wrong, or, or what, whatever the whatever the holdup is, because everybody has one, everybody has a holdup. But if you can learn to tune your frequency so that that signal comes in clear, and then you're receiving that message and ready to act on it. I'm telling you right now, your life is going to change. Your life is going to start to be the life that you want it to be because you're going to start moving in that direction. You know, the, 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 so the law of uh, something that's in motion will stay in motion, you know? It, it, it's... it's Life is motion. Consciousness is motion. The universe is motion. It's creative destruction. It's birth and death. It's happening now, 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 now. It just is and always is and it's going on and it's always moving. And you got to move with it. You got to ride that wave. You can't fight against it. If you do, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to have problems. And you're going to say, why? Why me? Why is this happening to me? 
So that that is really where you need to begin, where we all need to begin. And, and once again, I'm not an academic. I'm not an authority. I'm just a fucking person who has to work really, really, really super hard to keep my shit together. Uh, you know, so don't think that, you know, if you're listening to this, um, that I'm coming from some kind of place that's higher and harder to achieve or whatever. No, I'm right there with you. You know, everybody, we're all on this journey uh, together. And, and that sounds kind of cheesy, like, but it's true. I mean, we, we are here. We don't really know why. And, uh, but, you know, we're here. So we're here. Now what? You know, um, and I, and I just can't stress enough that that is what I believe in. You know, I, I believe that every single person on this planet is here for a reason. Is here to make the best life that they could possibly make for themselves, for the people around them, for their little world. And and when you when you change yourself, you change the world. Because when you change yourself and you're living in an alignment with what you believe in, with what you feel is right, when you're expressing yourself in the way that you wish to express yourself, in the way that you feel, um, you know, and, and I should just pause and say that maybe maybe there are people out there uh, that are that they think maybe they're expressing themselves in in, in a way that uh, they feel is is to their calling and they're living their life and they feel maybe 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 they feel satisfied and they feel like it's you know it is what it is but I, I just want to say that that might be true but I know you can do better because we all can do better because we are currently abiding by the rules that has been laid out before us. So yeah, there's successful people that are that are happy and that are satisfied for the most part because they've they've become numb to the signals that are coming in. They're not listening, they're not tuned into that frequency anymore. They shut the the radio, they shut their meat radio off and they're not listening to all the sensory information that's coming in that they that they they experience through the their senses their smell and their hearing and their sight and their you know their skin and their mere proximity to to other people and the energies and and all that stuff they've they've really numbed that all out and um you know i think that that can lead to trouble. And I think we see that in our world. We see unconscious behavior, you know, hate and murder and theft and ag passive aggressive bullshit and, and all of these mistrusting, paranoid kind of egoic forms of of self defense and and preservation of self you know all this craziness comes out when we when we are confined to obey uh, a certain kind of standard that has been set a certain kind of way of functioning and and look let's not here I here I go off on, on a tangent. I, I I I forgot where where I originally started off down, but we're going. So that's where we're. This is what these episodes are about. <laughs> Just the rantings of the rantings of a madman. The uh, but that that is that is what happens. That's what manifests. It's 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 really it's sweeping dirt under the rug. You know, eventually that rug is just going to pile up and that dirt's going to be spilling out and it's going to get on everybody's shoes and, and it's going to make the house all messy and smell. And it's just, that's what happened. We, we're just shitting on each other, you know? I mean, if you look at the earth as an organism, 
as everything that's a part of the earth. Humans, you know, like Alan Watts likes to say, the like a tree grows apples, the the earth grows humans, it peoples. And you know, if you look at it as one organism, as one whole thing, as as a singular unit, you would look at like our history and you'd be like, well, that's fucking insane. Just a bunch of murdering psychopaths killing each other. And um, and you would look at what we do to the planet, you know, with oil spills and, and all this kind of stuff. And it's basically like if you looked at that as a singular entity, it would be like if you were a human being and you were just shitting on yourself and you were, you know, st- stabbing yourself. That's what we're doing to each other and to the planet and, and everything. And so I believe that there's great power in intention and, and setting an intention to, to walk a certain path, to go down a certain road, to be a certain person, to be an authentic person. You know, the, the things that, the images that we receive, the, the, the way that the system is set up, is 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 set up to benefit this is not wacky conspiracy or you know crazy whatever this is just reality it's the truth i mean this is the way that the the way that things have been set up in the past and the way that it maybe has worked out or what or not necessarily worked out but the way that things have been done but the way that things have been done have been done at a very low consciousness level and you know we we are evolving. If you believe that human beings are evolving and growing and learning and our minds are expanding and we're connecting with each other like we've never connected with each, with each other before, if you be, I mean you don't even have to believe it. It's it's what's happening. I mean right now as I talk to 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 all of you out there, you know, this is the goal. This right now, this is the goal. The goal is communicating what I have to share, the, the, the things that I've learned or experienced or feel compelled to get out there, whatever it is. May, may, you know, like I said, I'm not an academic. I'm not, I'm not any kind of special person. I'm just a person that, that happens to feel that he wants to be in service to others, that he wants to provide a value to others, that wants to foster a conversation for others, because this is how we understand the human condition. This is how we understand each other. I mean, wow. What a concept, right? I mean, it's just unbelievable. You know, that that I majored in communication in college. And at the time, I thought it was bullshit and it was just an easy way to get like, you know, good grades and get a degree. And most people, they look at that and they that's what they think. Just like, ah, kind of a BS major. But it's not. It's not. You know, I got a lot of value out of that because I took a lot of classes in philosophy and psychology and mass media and and it really did provide me with value because communication is such a dire skill that people that we all need in this world you know most of the problems that we face is simply from not understanding each other each other each other, each other. not being able to communicate with each other and when we don't understand each other and we can't communicate with each other, we fear the other, but the other should not be feared because the other is us and we are the other and we are connected through our sameness of our humanness of this life that we are birthed into, this world that we come into. We don't know why and we don't know from where. But that mystery is something that we all share. That that feeling of wonder and magic that we had when we were children of of a of a world that was just full of life and possibility. That is what we need to get back to. That is what's very important. That is what makes us help understand each other. That is what will help foster better communication to each other. That is what will help make the world a better place 
When you make yourself a better a better person, you impact the people around you. When you impact the people around you, they change, and thus the larger scope of the world changes in ripples, in cycles. It happens, and we we are not destined to repeat the past. We are not tied to our ancestors in a way that we f- that we are doomed to repeat the mistakes that they made we are not in a a you know in a downward spiral this is not the the apocalypse this is a changing of consciousness an opening of awareness a realization of the real of where we are we rip away the curtain and we are exposed raw and naked in a field of consciousness that we call life that we call the universe and we are creating the world and the world is creating us the 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 the, the you know i'll say that again it's it's There is an objective world, but there is also a subjective world. And the objective and the subjective work together to build reality. And you are authoring your own reality as time moves on, as the words that are coming out of my mouth, as I look at the the stream that's coming off on the audio recorder, that these are the moments to take hold of. There is only now. And you have a choice. Your choice is to live in illusion, comfortable illusion, comfortable illusion, and you will go on living your life in the way that you have been, and you will have the same problems that you have, and you will blame the same things and the same people, and your story will become your story, and you will be the victim, and you will, you know, and, you know, there's a lot of people that are living that way. I sure have lived that way before, and I'm, I'm here to tell you from experience that, it leads nowhere. It leads nowhere. It leads to a small life, to a trapped life, to anguish, to despair, to regret, poverty of mind and soul and spirit and wealth. And the reason why um, I, I feel personally, for me, that psychedelics was a, were, were a very big opener for me. And the reason is because I'm a stubborn person with a big ego. And it really took powerful psychedelic to crack open my head. You know, uh, Timothy Leary used to say, you have, sometimes you, Timothy Leary said, uh, you know, you have to, uh, you have to go um, go out of your mind if you want to get into your head or something like that, you know. And I, and uh, I, I, I like to say, for me, like I lived a very unconscious life until I had a very profound psychedelic experience, and and that all ch- it changed everything. It really clarified things. It cleared things up. It put things in perspective. It made me really feel what really real what was real you know it, 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 it deconditioned me from all the clutter and the junk and the cultural baggage of all the things that I was supposed to be and supposed to believe in and you know yada 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 and all that crap it just shattered that completely open and I needed that I needed that because I I was very uh living a very unconscious life with with a with a big ego um you know, and and so for me, I maybe did a lot of things that were maybe mean spirited or didn't really have a lot of heart to them. And I and I and I've been saying, you know, like you know, sometimes you need to go out of your mind so you can go into your heart. You know, sometimes you sometimes you need to get out of your own way so you can really open open up. And, and and let others in and be vulnerable and tell it like it is unapologetically as you see it and 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 you know I mentioned this before and I want to get back to it it's just being authentic you know being you I want to be the the I want to be a professional Mike Brancatelli like I want to be the best person that I can be whatever abilities, skills, and talents I have, I want to make sure that I use them to the fullest. And, and, uh, someone says, um, 
I forget who says this, but they say, you know, one of the biggest tragedies is to to die to 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 die with your song unsung. And that, you know, think about that. You know, that is that's powerful. Cuz everybody has a song to sing, and we're all in this journey of life together. And what's the point? The point is we're all playing in a band together. As Alan Watts says, life is like music. The point is not to get to the end. The point is to dance and to play. If the point was to get to the end, then people would go and they would go to concerts and they would just go for one big crashing finale. But that's not what it is. Life is like music and the point is to dance and to play and to and to ride that wave. And this is an important message because and like I said, you know, once again, you know, who the fuck am I? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just I'm just tra- I'm just talking here. So so ride with me, okay? But the but as far as I know, it seems to me that we're in a very crucial point in our t- in, in in time right now. There are dark forces at work in this world, unconscious people living soulless lives, people in power, people hoarding things and dominating things and just a lot of insanity, a lot of cold-heartedness and really a lot of unconsciousness. And that is that is, you know, some real life dark sorceress you know, shit, some real serious Lord of the Rings shit. And really, we need you. You know, we need as many people on the side of team light, team positive energy, team optimist, team inertia, you know, whatever you want to call it, whatever you think is a good term to talk about or to, to, to identify it as. I don't like to get caught up in, you know, third eye chakras and this, that, and the other thing. Just let's just talk like we don't know any of this stuff. And let's just talk from a real place of understanding. You know, as Steve Jobs said in that in that clip that I played, like, The world is created a certain way. But we can all work together to help. And, and, and when I say work together, <laughs> I don't mean in some way of like, come on, people now, smile on your brother, everybody. You know, I don't mean like everybody hold hands and sing kumbaya and, every, and, and think positive thoughts and everything's going to be magic and good. No, no. That's not what this is about. Life is hard. Life sucks sometimes. Things are things are tough, but you but pushing through. I have found personally in my life that pushing through and coming out on the other side is what makes it worth the candle, worth the, the wax. I never I never get that expression right. It makes the juice worth the squeeze, whatever. But that's really what it's what it's all about. And you are powerful. Whoever you are, I know people that listen to this podcast, you're powerful. I mean, look, you're God, okay? Whether you believe it or not. That's, uh, there's this funny story I remember someone told me about like, uh, there, they had there was someone that had like one of those like Native American dream catcher things, and they put it in their uh, like bedroom. And someone came by, and they were they said to the other person that had it, they said, uh, "You don't really believe in that thing, do you?" And the, the person said, "Oh yeah, no. I mean, I heard you don't even have to believe in it for it to work. <laughs> you don't have to believe in it for it to work. It just works." But my point is. What kind of world do you want to live in? What kind of life do you want to have?
what kind of world do we want to leave to to our kids and you know or or the next generation or, or whoever you know we all have a chance right now to to author a new reality you know it's our it's our it's our duty to do that i mean i feel personally that i was let down by society by the institutions that we that my parents were told to believe in and their parents were told to believe in and you know see this is just a cycle and you know Daenerys Targaryen on Game of Thrones says it the best when she says I don't want to uh stop the wheel I want to break it and that's really what we we if we believe in making the world a better place if we believe in improving our lives and and if we believe in putting good and value into the world in order to create a better life for uh for ourselves and for our loved ones and and for everyone if we believe that then we got to break the wheel because the wheel's not going to stop by itself but what i've learned is you don't break the wheel with the same energy that is used to spin the wheel. Does that make sense? So what I mean by that is, is like from Albert Einstein's famous quote, right? Like uh, you can't solve a problem with the same level of consciousness that created it. You know, the, 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 the same mind that created the problem, the same vibrational frequency and level of consciousness that, that caused this problem to come into being cannot be solved by this, this inside-of-the-box level of thinking within the same realm of that consciousness and that frequency and that vibration and that awareness. It, it, it just it, – it's not uh, part of the law. It, it can't – it's not part of the law of of physics or whatever. It it just you cannot possibly solve that that problem with the same level of consciousness that created it. You need a new level of consciousness in order to attack this situation. And and we see this happening in in our in our businesses and you know with innovation and in and technology and and all that kind of stuff and you know people are coming up with solutions to things. And one of my favorite examples of this is when Around the turn of the century, you know, New York City was piling up garbage and, you know, horse shit was everywhere because you had all the horse-drawn carriages and uh, that was their main level of transportation was horses and stuff. And, and there was garbage everywhere because they had no way of getting it out. But then the, lo- the, the combustion engine was, was invented and all of a sudden you had – it was like a miracle. You know, people were predicting that New York City was going to be done and, you know, they were like, there's garbage is going to pile up and there's just going to be horse shit everywhere and how are we going to get all this this stuff out? Then the engine was invented and and that took on a whole new modality. I I, I have birthed a whole new world, a whole new reality that, that, that nobody could have conceived of. Nobody could have conceived of it. None. No one. Maybe there was like some crazy guy that, you know, was like, I'm telling you, one day everyone's going to have a magic rectangle in their pocket. and They're going to be able to talk to anyone they want at any time they want. And, you know, so so these these things that, you know, these birthing of new realities, these the, 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 these things, they're like these feedback loops, Jason Silva talks about this, these feedback loops, you know, this is one of the most, uh, powerful things that I've ever heard. And it's, it's really, you know, the self authoring of our realities, the self authoring of our lives. Joe Rogan says, be the hero in your, in your movie. If life was a movie and you were the main character, what would happen right now? And I love that Joe Rogan clip. And if you don't know it, go find it. It's on YouTube. Be your be the hero in your movie. And 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 author your version of reality, your authentic version of reality. You author that. And when you author that into the world and create things or or put things into action, 
other things start to pop up and reinforce what you're doing. Synchronicity increases at an exponential rate and things start coming into your life. You know, this is the kind of law of attraction stuff that I think a lot of people got too hung up on this thing of like, oh, you just think positive thoughts and then, you know, stuff happens. And that's not how it works. You got to put the work in. You got to really go through a lot of suffering and a lot of, you know, hardship, possibly, possibly, in order to get what you want. You got to, it's like, um, the way I describe it is, is, you know, it's like we're all wizards, right? Like we all, we all have magical powers. We do. We all have magical powers. It's just there. There's the the the. It's delayed, you know. I can't wave a magic wand and make a uh, you know, a hat just appear in front of me. But what I can do is I can have an image of a kind of hat that I want to create in my mind, and then I can figure out a way to create that hat with the materials that I find in my environment or the people that I know, and I can literally wizard that thing into existence by by creating it. Having the thought in my head and then taking that thought, that picture, that vision in my head, and then putting the effort in to make it become an actual real thing that does not just exist in my head, but exists in this physical, tangible world that we all live, breathe, and bleed in. I mean, just think about that for a second. That's fucking mind-blowing. And, you know, I think Jason Silva also, who I just mentioned before, uh, gives a great talk about this. It's called We Are the Gods Now. And I think you can find that on YouTube. He gave that at the Sydney Opera House uh, Festival of Dangerous Ideas. You know, provocative title, but but it's true. And, you know, you don't have to believe in it for it to work. You just have to do it. You know, fuck your feelings. Fuck your beliefs. Just, I mean, you know, you got to believe in yourself <laughs> well, a little bit, but you don't have to believe in any of the, any of the you know energy and feedback you know whatever just believe in yourself and if you have something that you feel that you want to do and you want to be then you be and you do that and and so these feedback loops they 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 help us author reality and then we help th- them author reality like we are creating the world and the world is creating us the things that we create are also informing us. The, 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 the medium is the message, as Marshall McLuhan, great philosopher, used to say, the medium is the message. And, and what I take that to mean is the medium is the message and today's medium is the internet and the message of the internet is freedom. Freedom and connection and growth and prosperity and, 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 and peace and understanding and communication. Never, ever, ever before in history have we had the ability to connect like this with one another and connect like this in a way where we are talking about things that you will not hear when you turn on the television. We are talking about things that you will not hear when you turn on the radio. We're talking about things that you will not see at the Grammy Awards or the Oscars or in Hollywood movies or whatever. You won't hear this from your, you know, some of these university professors that ban certain kinds of books and speech. Nothing can stop an idea whose time has come. Ron Paul made that quote famous from Victor Hugo, and I believe in that. Nothing can stop an idea whose time has come. And uh, I had a very profound ayahuasca experience, and I talked about it on this podcast. I did a four-part series, my ayahuasca journey. If you want to go back and and listen to those, you can. Um, And in one of those ayahuasca journeys that I had, I had a vision of that that saying, uh, of Ron Paul saying, you know, nothing can stop an idea whose time has come. And I saw Buddha, and I saw Jesus, and shining with light and just in heaven in a in, in an ethereal magical place and 
the message that I got, because a lot of times I think people think, you know, that, that psychedelics provide you with these crazy visuals and they do, and they do. But a lot of times what they do provide you with is just direct, like a direct download of information or knowledge or wisdom or whatever, whatever it is. Maybe it's something, it's something that you maybe know inside of yourself, but it doesn't become clear until you do it. And whatever it is, it brings up the truth that you need to know at that moment for that situation. And so I remember having this profound ayahuasca experience and, and thinking about this idea, nothing can stop an idea as time has come and seeing Jesus and Buddha. And, and the message I got was there's always going to be people that pop up, that rise up like, like a, like a flower growing from inside of a crack of concrete on New York street or sidewalk. There's, you can't stop that. That's always going to happen because, because nothing can deny what we really are, what our true humanity is. We are these biological beings on this planet that are, you know, have the ability to contemplate and imagine and wonder and, 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 and think about, as Ernest Becker says, where were these, you know, these meat sacks that think about the, the, the possibilities and the infinite of the cosmos, yet we're destined to be food for worms which is bittersweet in a way and tragic, but that's what it is. And so if you, you know, if you look at humanity's history and you look at ourselves as being one, it's, you know, our true self, our true, our true humanity, our true self is love is understanding compassion with work, of course, but that is our natural human state. And when we live in harmony with that, we live in paradise. We live in heaven on earth. That's where, that's the only place there that it is. And that's the message that Jesus and Buddha and other figures, of course, throughout history that tried to communicate this to people and share this with people. And so, you know, during this profound ayahuasca vision, I thought to myself, I'm going to speak the truth as I see it. I'm going to speak to my true nature of being. And I'm not going to be afraid to do that because... Nothing can stop an idea whose time has come. Yes, you can, like, you know, you can, you can crucify it, you can kill it, you can bomb it, you can, you can capture it, you can throw it in a cage, you can lock it away. Nothing will stop that. That will, that will come back. You may kill the person and the body and this, and, and the biological meat vehicle. But you will not kill, no one will ever kill that idea. And that was pretty powerful to think about that. You know, having these profound psychedelic experiences really grounds you in your body and, and your soul and, and, and who you are and makes you feel makes you feel just what you are. Not, you know, the kind of person you are, the kind of boyfriend you are, the kind of student you are, the kind of employee you are, the kind of, you know, fashion sense you have and the kind of things you like and think, no, forget all, it's none of that. It's who you are at your core, at your true, at your most raw, real being human. And that's why I love psychedelics so much is because they 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 shed that mold that that 
gook that piles up on top of you. All the things that tell you you should be this or you're not good enough to do that or people are expecting this of you or that of you or, you know, this is what's accepted and this is what's normal and this is what people do. And like what I said before, the kind of images that we get from our television screens and from our mainstream media culture and society that we live in where these uh, institutions that hold power, you know, they're the ones that, that transmit the message that is, is that they, they, they are, they are create, they are authoring a reality and entering into a feedback loop and they're only able to get away with what they get away with because we, we allow it, we accept it. But if we start turning on and, tuning up and vibrating on a higher frequency and elevating our consciousness and moving into our heart space with love and and empathy and connection and understanding and communication and speaking truth and being unapologetic and, and authentic when we live that way when we when we take that on as our mission to be that no matter what no matter what that's unstoppable you know that's then we we create an entirely new reality. Like I said before, with the horse and carriage and the locomotive, or the uh, uh, cars and, and whatnot being being invented, we will auth- We will together. It we will individually author our own realities, and then collectively that will birth a new new modalities, new ways of doing things, new shapes, new spaces, new colors, new buildings, new, new things will emerge. I just saw that there was a, there's a gym in San Francisco that is, uh, it's the, the world's first cannabis gym. That's fucking amazing. You know, think about what we could do if we're able to break the wheel from, you know, end this old world power structure of fear based you know, living in a in, in, in small minded living and unconscious living, break through that mold and grab hold of your destiny and live with a true authentic meaning. You know, if we're able to do that, then everything that we think we know is is everything that we think we know can be changed. Everything can be changed. It can be improved. It can be made better. It can be you know, one of the things that I, I like to think about is education, right? I mean, such a crucial, important thing. But, I mean, like, what if, what if we, if we, if we allowed more freedom to be had, if we stopped, you know, violent wars and, and, and we, and we gave freedom and liberty a chance and we let people experiment with psychedelics and have direct experiences and we allowed people to grow at their own pace and and really foster and and create spaces that are designed to be uh where you know where 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 community can uh be found uh, Jonathan Jonah Lear wrote this great book imagine i know he got in trouble for like plagiarizing something or whatever but still i don't care it was a great book and one of the things he talked about was the New York City kind of dance, the New York City energy and the New York City dance, you know, the birthing of ideas. Why is it such a creative place? Why are there so many creative people living here? Well, it's because there's so many people here and everybody's bouncing around, and, you know, and, 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 and running into each other and networking and, and, and the energy of the creative fires up other creatives to be ener- energized and, and, and all feeds into each other and creates this feedback loop and it creates this space that fosters a new way of thinking. And so, you know, we can go further, you know, it, it, we can go, we can go bigger, we can go bolder, we can do so much more. We're not done yet. We have not reached the pinnacle of, of society. This is not the apotheosis of, of all there is, you know, this is, this is, you know the, the the state would like the government would like you to think that right they would like you to think that but they're the, the truth is they are they are a impediment they are in the way they are making things more difficult than they should be by introducing force and coercion and theft and robbery you know on all these just the, the pathological 
kind of systems and, and sociopathic behaviors that operate in them. And I've, I've talked about this before on other podcasts and just how, you know, people are attracted to that. And what I want to do moving forward, and I want to close up soon, what I want to do moving forward is I want to focus more on the positive. Yes, there's a lot of bad things going on. We'll talk about them still. But how do we deal with them? How do we change the game? How do we how do we co-author a new reality? How do we come up with all new modalities, all new spaces that that foster innovation and creativity, new places for people to be allowed to to to, to percolate and 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 have idea sex, as Matt Ridley says in his, in his book, The Rational Optimist. You know, I think it can be achieved. I think that there's, we are in a very interesting time to be alive right now. Very interesting time to be alive right now. And I think that we all hold tremendous, <laughs> tremendous, tremendous power, absolutely tremendous power. I mean, totally tremendous power. I told him. <laughs> and by the way, we won by a tremendous amount. This is what I'm talking about. So, we, you know, these these people, these things that are going on, it almost seems like it's automatic. Like it's automatic, like it's just happening, like it's happening and there's nothing we can really do. And, you know, I kind of grew up in a world where people were just kind of telling me like, hey, this is the world. This is the way it is. You know, not not really anything that you can do about it just is what it is. And that's true to a certain extent. But that extent goes to the fact that you can do something about it that we can all do something about it and so so my goal here is to inspire you i don't want to get you down i don't want to make you depressed i want to inspire you i want to inspire people out there that are capable of doing amazing things if only they had listened to their gut if only they had followed their path if only they had decided to shut off all the noise and focus on what they really want and and that's psychedelic man that is fucking psychedelic that is a trip life is a fucking trip I mean, just being alive is trippy. I, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, I recently had a, um, I recently had an experience where I was planning on taking a large dose of of mushrooms, a heroic dose, uh, if you will, if you Terence McKenna it, you know, five dry grams in silent darkness. And I've done that so many times and I've, I've done it because I really wanted to gain wisdom and information and knowledge and, and experience the, the beauty and awe of it because it's just mind-blowingly beautiful when you do it in the right way. And I mean, it's just absolutely just fantasy level fun when you can do that and, and mystical and, and just unbelievable. But I was getting ready to do this and, and there's always a level of nerve that comes comes along with that because I mean if you if you're if you're if you're not nervous before eating 5 grams of mushrooms in silent darkness then you're doing it wrong. I mean you should be nervous, you know, eating that much 5 6 7 grams whatever. So I was a little nervous and I was thinking, do I really need this right now? Is this really, do I really, and I had that thought of that Alan Watts says, like, you know, with psychedelics, if you get the message, hang up the phone. You got the message. You know what the message is. And I thought, and I, and, and it was so weird. This feeling just came over me. I had this tingling sensation. I felt like I just, autom I felt like I just started tripping. Like, I just felt like I started, I, I felt like I had just jumped right into the middle of a deep, profound mushroom trip. Like it just triggered in me. It just happened, like automatic, it came on, just out of nowhere. And and it, I just sat there like paralyzed for like five minutes. And it just, the, 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 my mind was just going, it was just thinking about like breaking it down. And I go, oh yeah, I don't really need to do this because I've done it enough and I've gained all I can gain from it for now. And so, yeah, wow. And then I was like, holy shit, I just had a trip without having a trip. I was like, I just learned something without even doing it. I'd had like, it was like the mushrooms were like, trust me, buddy, you're good. We're here, we'll show you. And you got it. Okay, cool. Come back to us when you're ready to just like party and laugh, go to like the Museum of Natural History to the Space Center and fucking, you know, trip out in there with some friends and laugh. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. 
Um, so I got the message and, and I'll just close off by saying, you know, the, the point of doing this podcast today and sharing what I had to share was I, I felt like I, I, I felt worked up in, in a flow state. Like I'm, I, I, I'm, things are clicking, things are clear, things are making sense. And I think for a long time, there's been a back and forth, a back and forth, kind of a ping ponging of, of thoughts and ideas, because I tend to do that. I think everybody tends to do that. Everybody tends to question themselves. Everybody tends to think, you know, what are they going to think? What, what should I do? You know, where should I go? How should I act, behave, this, that? And, you know, like I said before about the, the information that we receive, that we get transmitted to of, you know, this is the way life is. You know, you're watching television and everybody loves Raymond is on and they're like, what they're telling you is this is the way that that life looks. This is what life looks like. This is what life is like. And then the commercials go and they, and the commercials are, Hey, you know, are you, are you feeling depressed? And, you know, we all have heard this joke before and then they, and they, all these commercials, but the point is they're all telling you, this is what life is. This is what reality is. This is what you need to be worried about. This is what you need to be paying attention to. And for who? All right, I think it's time to wrap up because in the background, no matter where I go in my apartment, there's always noise. There's a sewer that's like exploding across my street and there's fire trucks down here. This is what you get living in the the most highly concentrated area of bars and restaurants in New York City. Uh, Never a dull moment ever. (laughs) <laughs> as you can probably hear in the background. So with that being said, I really love doing what I'm doing right now. I love talking this way. I love thinking about these things. And most importantly, I love inspiring and helping people as best I can. I need help and you help me and I help you and we move this thing forward together. We we connect and we talk about these ideas and we get the conversation going and we get people thinking in new and different ways and then we start authoring new realities and creating new modalities and creating a new world and living a more peaceful, enjoyable life where we can all be authentic and true and happy and free. Thank you so much for tuning into this stream of consciousness ranting mind jam episode of Mike Adelic. I am Mike Brancatelli. And of course, if you love the show, please, I mean, I'm just absolutely blown away by how many reviews and things I've gotten. So go leave a, a nice little review on iTunes for me, if you will. It just helps out a lot. And be on the lookout for that Patreon campaign. I'm going to have that coming out, and that's going to be really exciting. We're going to launch, we're going to launch a big, nice big media business out of this little podcast that I've started uh, just about almost a year ago. And thank you. Live long and prosper. Peace. So one of the prevailing motifs here on Shots of Awe is as human beings, as conscious agents, how do we resolve the inherent tension between wanting to realize, to fully realize our potential, to realize ourselves as individuals who stand with dignity and resist the tug of conformity? How do we avoid succumbing to a zombified trance state of blindly following others in a herd as sheep, as hamsters in a hamster wheel. And, you know, it's funny because I think that the way we resolve that is by taking that plunge, by answering that call that Joseph Campbell talks about. There is no one map for how to live our lives. Reality is just a word, and you're not supposed to use it without quotation marks around it anyway, as Joseph Campbell says. We are all free to create our own reality, but it's only when we are bold enough to decondition our thinking, to transcend what Robert Anton Wilson calls the reality tunnel, right? This linguistic and conceptual and symbolic framework that constructs reality, this animatrix pulled in front of your eyes, blinding you from ecstatic visions of what might be behind those walls. You know, we are larvas who haven't turned ourselves into butterflies yet. And there's that great line by Nietzsche that says, those who were seen dancing were called insane by those who could not hear the music.
Never forget the words of Jack Kerouac. The only people for me are the mad ones. Mad to live, mad to talk, mad to be saved, desirous of everything at the same time. Those who never yawn or say a commonplace thing, but burn, burn, burn like yellow Roman candles exploding like spiders across the sky.